Well, well, today is Thursday, August 20th, 2020, and this is the week in charts. I just want to thank all you guys and girls for being here. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. I'm humbled by your presence. I know there's a lot of other things you could be doing right now. So what are we talk about? Well, I want to talk about current bar conditions, obviously. S&P, brand new highs today. That's kind of interesting. Your questions on trading, your favorite stock picks. If you don't mind, keep your questions relative to what I'm talking to on the slides, just so my ADD doesn't kick in. And then uh, when we get to the live charts, you can ask about anything you want. And also hold off on your stock picks until we get there. And just ask about one issue at a time, if you don't mind. Uh, just put the ticker around and hit return. And you can ask about as many as you want. So what's the focus this week? Well, I want to continue to talk about how IPOs are still the next big thing, part two. And I want to flesh out a little bit more, update some examples from last week, add in a new example, some live trades and things like that. And then I've been paying a lot of attention to crypto and PM and a few of you guys back and forth. So I figured now would be a good time to talk a little bit about crypto and show some trends there and that's going to be pretty cool if i say so myself there's a disclaimer screen as you know you can lose money trading or as i often say all predictions about the future and a lot of stuff can between now and then that's boring line from my buddy greg morris so i want to talk about the methodology and action and how ipos are still the next big thing i'm going to show some trades that we talked about in the facebook group group recently some trades that i took myself and i think showing these live trades will make a lot of sense when it comes to the ipos now a few years back jesus it's been more than a few years i forgot to look at the date on some of the slides that i grabbed for tonight but it's a while it's been a while it's probably been since oh i don't know six or seven years since i did this ipo course and i called it the promise of the future and that's because a lot of the promise never materializes, but so what? If you can get in and make money in the IPO and get out, then you made money, right? And why are we here? We're here to make money. They can also be a technician's dream because technical analysis is based on the fact that if a market's gonna go from A to C and B is somewhere in between, it has to go through B. It's a concrete rule. There's no concrete rule when it comes to fundamentals or any other methodology for that matter. You can't say, well, P is this you want to buy or P is that you want to sell. By the way, I do use PE, but just the numerator. And you mathematician people out there who trade will probably get that. <laughs> so some of the ground rules are we're trading sardines. I use the sardine as a metaphor for the IPOs. The story of the sardines, without getting into all the details, was that somebody bought some sardines because everybody was excited about trading them. And when he opened them up, he had bought the high ticket today, by the way. And then uh, when he opened them up, he found out they were rotten. And the guy who sold them to him said, hey, those sardines are for trading, not eating. So I think IPOs, and that's why I use the, the sardine symbol and bought a little, or I have a little sign called Sardine Drive and the people on Sardine Drive are kind of pissed off that I took it, but <laughs> it's pretty cool. So, we're trading sardines, not eating them. So when the time comes, you have to be willing to say so long and thanks for all the fish. Now, one of the main rules, and if you don't walk away with anything tonight, but this is that a significant high is made during the first week of trading often, okay? Now we don't try to buy IPOs pre-market. I'm, I'm probably a month behind on emails right now. And I get to them eventually. But I noticed one guy was trying to buy some IPOs and he needed a quarter million dollars to put in his account because in order to get on like the IPO list, you had to put this money down and all. And no, you don't want an IPO before it goes public. I don't wanna go into a lot of details, but I, I know someone, I'm not gonna say his name because it'll sound like I'm name dropping. And he got shares of one of these hot IPOs, like a Facebook or whatever, years ago. And it actually, initially, it didn't really do that great. And he told me flat out, he says, yeah, Dave, but I get a lot of turds too. <laughs> you know, when they offer them, you have to keep taking them uh, because otherwise they won't offer them to you anymore. But the bottom line is, even if you could get them before they go public, 
nine out of 10 times you don't want them because most of the time or, or often I should say a lot of these IPOs will come public and just flat out die which we'll talk about in just one second here. Now speaking of flat out die one of the most common patterns is die and die. Like I said last week I've identified about a half a dozen common patterns and within those common patterns there's tradable patterns or you just simply avoid bad trades, okay? Like this pattern here, the die and die. And then about a half a dozen not so common patterns. So the old Will Rogers saying, buy stocks that go up, they don't go up, don't buy them, comes to mind. In IPOs, you could pretty much do just that. If all you did was, let's go back a slide. If all you did was, see these five bars over to the right here? If all you did was, let's say, buy the breakout, and although I have a better way of doing it, but let's say all you did was buy the breakout of these five bars and put in a stop down here. And if they broke down before they broke out, just don't take the trade. I think if that's all you did, you would do really well. However, there's a lot of things you can do to improve upon that. Now, I'm not gonna go, when we get to the live charts, I'll show you a few of these. I realize after doing a few presentations that I might beat the dead horse a little bit too much on the die and die, just because it's such a common pattern and it could just keep you out of trouble by not buying stocks that go down. Now, fly and die, another one of the very, very common patterns. There's some initial excitement about the IPO and I was looking at my slides earlier from the IPO presentation, the course that I did on IPOs, and there's a lot in there. I didn't realize because I'm like, am I giving everything away tonight? You know, But there's a lot more in there and I went into a lot of explanation about why you often have the fly and the die. And some of it is need to know and some of it is just neat to know, okay? But the bottom line is, if you just accept the fact that a lot of times an IPO comes public, has a massive rally, and then begins to implode, don't fall in love with them. That's what I'm trying to say. Money management, money management, money management. Very, very crucial. But the fly and the die is a very common pattern. Now, last week we talked a little bit about pioneer patterns and secondary patterns and then core methodology. We'll touch upon that in one second. The bottom line is the best opportunities tend to come early in the cycle, but secondary and even longer term setups, meaning not a longer term setup in and of itself, just like a core methodology setup going back into a, an IPO that's been out for a year, maybe even longer or two, can provide great opportunities. But again, the best opportunity is gonna be in these pioneer type of setups. So pioneer setup, no set, date or time for that 30 days first 30 days is great probably the best but i consider a pioneer pattern up to maybe 90 days and then you can have these secondary patterns also set up fairly quickly and they can set up within the first several weeks of trading on out to several months of trading so as a general statement those would be secondary setups and then down the road even after six months seven months eight months and even a year or longer you have some of these core methodology type of trades, TKOs, pullbacks, and things of that nature. So back here, it was more of a breakout type of strategy, which I'll show you a couple of things there in just a second. Right here, I'm not sure why I didn't take the pullback in this one, as I said last week, but it was a pullback there, TKO. It sort of failed miserably. You may have trailed the stop higher and not got stopped out for a full low. But then we did take this one right here. It's a big picture cup and handle. It's a deep pullback after a nice thrust higher. It was just a good look at setup. And then we took partial profits here, trailed the stop higher, and unfortunately got stopped out on this one. And I was hoping, I know, <laughs> hoping one hand and you know the other. Uh, <laughs> I guess I better keep it PG-13. But I was hoping it would turn into a longer term trend. And obviously, it did not. It was up over 100% at one time. Then it had the mother of all retraces, which in a volatile stock like this, you have to be willing to give it room. But yeah, you know, I drop an F-bomb in the end and then I look and see, well, did I make money on a trade or not? If I did, then I just shut up. 
this is left over from last week, but I just want to show you that for those who weren't here, we do have an active IPO uh, group of IPO traders and Dave Landry Trend Traders, and I was just looking for a couple of the IPOs that I was in, and I noticed that some of you guys were talking about the same exact stocks. And in some cases, as I said last week, I think that I was able to get uh, or some some IPO ideas off of you guys. And in, in one case, like the ANNX, I was watching it, but I'd forgotten about it. And I saw one of you guys that brought it up. It's probably, uh, I think it was John. One of the Johns, at least, John Ross. So let's just talk about buy it B. So again, this is how I kind of stumbled into doing an IPO course because I got to thinking about sort of research on the fact that, you know, an IPO comes public and if it's going to go on to make new highs, it's going to have to start making new highs. I know, duh. And I got to thinking about the ABC rule of technical analysis and I came up with the buy at B. And then I started doing a lot of research into IPOs and that's where I came up with the primary or I should say the pioneer setups, the secondary setups and so on and so forth. And then once they've been out for a while, the core methodology will catch them too. So for pioneer setups, we have the buy at B with the buy at B with the five day SMA. And then there's a few other ones that could qualify as the pioneer setup. But the one of the most popular ones, which seems to have struck a chord with a lot of people is the buy at B. And there's a few more details to it, but the gist is that you're going to buy IPOs in the first new closing high on or after day five. That's the, the gist of it, okay? There's a few details. If day one sets the high for the first week, it must also close above the day one high. Otherwise, don't worry about the day one high. That'll make a lot more sense in a minute. It's not nearly as difficult as it sounds. Now, when I did the IPO course, my cutoff was about $20. I did the research going back about 10 years or so. And I realized that it seemed like the sweet spot was the lower priced within some reason, okay, within reason, IPOs. And then by accident, I was writing on column a few years back when I think it was well, it was Chewy, but before Chewy, it was Snapchat, and I thought Snap was the stupidest stock at Stupid Town. It's done quite well since, but it did implode for a while, obviously. And I wanted to come up with a simple rule that I could put in a blog post that would keep people out of trouble in the IPO. And I said, well, what if I put a five-day moving average in there and required Landry Light? And that way, you'd have to wait actually six days, because most charting packages won't give you a, a five-day moving average until six days in. So that was kind of the idea. You'd have to wait until at least the sixth day, although the buy at B, you will buy as early as the five day, and I'll show you that in one second. Anyway, so by adding the moving average, I got to thinking, it's a momentum filter, which also works really well with issues greater than $20 a share. So if you were going to trade IPOs greater than $20 a share, add in a momentum filter if you're trading one of these pioneer type of setups. And the five-day simple moving average Landry Light is a really good little filter, if I say so myself. And all you're doing there is looking for a low greater than the moving average. Now, here's some details. And this is something that we could spend a lot of time talking about. And I spent a lot of time in the course talking about this too. But you want to have a pretty good range on an IPOs. And, and I know it sounds a little arbitrary, but if it's it moves, let's say, 30, 40 percent or more in the first week or so of trading, then it might be a viable candidate. If it's a little bit higher price and moves quite a bit point wise, say like 10 points point wise, it's probably has enough range. Volume is really, really, really tricky. I had a setup for tonight that I wanted to show my service peeps, and I, sh I showed it as an honorable mention because I'm not sure whether there's enough volume or not, and I forgot to check the spread on it. I didn't see the setup until the market was closed, and so I didn't know what the spread, the true spread was. So sometimes you'll find one you really like and set a two-point spread. Obviously, you can't trade that, so you got to be careful. The other thing with volume is, as John, I want to say Ross in the group pointed out, Sometimes they can be like Hotel California. It's easy to get in them. They'll always let you in, but sometimes they won't let you out. 
what's the story of Fat of Glory? Ideally, you want some kind of excitement in the IPO. I passed recently on Carrier Corp because I couldn't get excited about air conditionings, but evidently, air conditioning is important with COVID-19. So maybe that's where why I missed that one. I missed Lululemon, as I said last week, because I thought it was stupid. They just make yoga clothes, but evidently they make really good yoga clothes. And you should see me in my yoga pants. I got them on now, but it's out of the frame. So well, you, 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 don't, you can't unsee that. So anyway, but yeah, even like a burrito manufacturer, manufacturer maker could be a, uh, could be a hot IPO. When I did the original IPO course, there were a bunch of acquisition companies and most of those stocks were crap. So I said, hey, let's just eliminate those. And there's still a bunch out there that are crap. In fact, I, I whittled down a list for us to look at tonight. And it, uh, it had a lot of those acquisition companies in there were crap. But recently there's this new excitement about these SPACs, S-P-A-Q or S-P-A-C, Special Purpose Acquisition Company. And uh, these SPACs have been hot. It seems like the bloom is off the rose a little bit in these and some of the other speculative stocks too lately, super speculative stocks. But there's still some excitement out there. It's crazy. The volatility is just nuts right now. So I started paying more attention to these SPAC stocks again. And that's probably what actually drew me to this one. We have day one, day two, day three, day four, and day five. Now we have a whole week of trading. So when was the high set for the week? Well, the high was set on day one. So the rule is if the high is set on day one, you not only need a closing high, a new closing high, but that closing high has to be above the high of day one. So there's your closing high right there. Stock kind of meanders around, has a big sell off. Now, the range was kind of tight on this one, but once it sold off, then you had a pretty good range. You had about a 40 or 50% range. That's that's adequate. Notice that it did pierce above that high, but you would not buy on that day. Why? Because it did not close above the first day high. Okay, so it's not a, a, a an entry trigger like we use on a pullback or something like okay guys we're getting this pullback if it rallies above 12 and if it doesn't rally above 12 don't don't buy it so in this particular case it did close above that day one high which was new closing high and i took the trade as you can see here and let's see what happened well so far it just kind of meandered it really hasn't done a whole lot just yet and i've been on both sides of profitability with this one and it hasn't really rallied enough for me to take partial profits it can be a leap of faith with these things. Sometimes you buy them and then you ask yourself, what did I do? Because it's it's tough to buy into the close. If you're buying a stock intraday, by the end of the day, it's not the ultimate outcome, but at least you know whether or not it's working or not early on. And sometimes the stock will trigger and never look back. Sometimes, rarely, but sometimes you'll get the initial profit target out of a core methodology type of setup, like a TKO pullback or something like that. And then you're you're already in trail and stop mode one day. But with the buy at B, when you're buying on the close, it could be a little scary. Although every now and then you get a little gift, and I'll show you one in just a second. So here's another one that I took. I'm sorry, I did not take this one. This is RKT. This one hasn't set up yet. So one, two, three, four. I get this one in RXT mixed up. One, two, three, four, five. So we got five days. When was the high set for the week? The high was set on day two, okay? So we're no longer worried about the stock closing above the high of day one. In this particular case, the buy would be at this level here, a new closing high. We're gonna buy a market on close. So let's see what happens. So we're not quite there yet. And since this stock is above $20 a share, and I've been a little bit more lenient lately, I've been buying stocks in the $25 range and not worried about too much. But as a general statement, when they're above $25 a share, you probably also want to see some Landry light, meaning that the low is greater than 
the moving average as I've drawn in here. So this could be a viable setup. Any close above 25, 25, maybe give it a little bit of wiggle room, let's say 25, 50, okay? Okay, the question is, can you mention the stops you would have on these setups to give a sense of how wide the stop needs to be? Okay, so in a case like this particular one, so let's say you're entering up here, let's say 2550, okay? Well, where would this position be a failure if it came all the way back to, let's say 20 in this particular case? So I know it sounds kind of crazy, but a five point stop in a stock like this would probably be necessary. And when we look at some profit targets on some upcoming trades, uh, I can show you what I actually use. So here's another one, one, two, three, four, five. So that's the first week of trading. The closing high was set on what day? On day four. And notice that that day was also the high for the week. So we're no longer worried about the close above the day one high rule. Even though in this particular case, if it closes above day four, the closing high, it would also be above the day one high, okay? So that would be our trigger on that day there. And by the way, on some of these, it's kind of a, an interesting phenomenon. I don't know if I have the, the chart in here. I hope I do. But on some days, you get a narrow range. And then on that fifth day, you get a big pop. And that sort of completes the range. And that's where it takes a little discretion to say, oh, OK, range was kind of narrow before. I wasn't going to take this trade on a close. I'd wait for a secondary setup. But then if the range gets really big, you might go ahead and say, you know what, the range is big now, this stock has shown some promise, I'm gonna go ahead and get long. So in this particular case, the range did increase on day, I guess day seven. So it was buy, market on close, and that's the, I took a snapshot from an account just to show you that I actually bought it. By the way, anything I show you, I've either taken, in a lot of cases, I try to show you everything I take that works out, and some, things that fail miserably <laughs> for the occasional money management lesson. But anything I ever show you, I was thinking about this lately for the new people for like, let's say the stock charts audience. Anything I show you is something I would personally take myself. Now you can see initially it didn't do so well. In fact, the next day I do remember this one specifically. And I think it was on, it wasn't on a weekend. It was one on a weekend that kind of imploded over the weekend. But this one, the next day I came in and it was up a little bit. It's like, oh, okay, I'm pretty smart buying that IP on the close. And then it started coming back in. I'm like, what have I done? And then luckily it did begin to rally a little bit and I was able to take partial profits here. And then it began to take off a little bit and then it's kind of meandered around a little bit. Still in the black on this one. And I'm gonna try, try my best to hold on. So if we go back, let's go back a little bit in this animation. Let's see. So 1992, 2492. So what's that? That's five points. So Harry was asking how many, like what would the stops be? So in this particular case, I decided to use five points, which is kind of extreme, but you're buying up here at 20 something and five points would be like down here. So that would suggest that it has begun to fail. I know some people who will actually go close to the old lows, okay? And they just trade fewer shares. Now, when they get stopped out, they lose more money, but they're trading fewer shares, so it, it's not as bad, but they do catch occasional more winners. Sometimes these things take off, come back in hard, and then take off again. Now, the good news is when that does happen, there are cases where we're able to get a secondary setup. So here's another one, one, two. So now we know that the day one high has been exceeded. We don't know that's gonna be the high for the week, but it doesn't matter. We know that the day two is, is higher than day one. So we no longer have to worry about it closing above the day one high, day three, day four, day five. Now in this particular case, the close would be fairly close to the high of, of day one, but slightly below it. So and that would be entry right there and you would buy market on close and this particular that's what i was thinking that in this particular case the close was well above the day one high but that wasn't necessarily a prereq in this particular case and let's see what happened so far it hasn't set the world on fire and you can see 
that it's kind of meandered back and forth. And I hate to use the word whole, but hopefully we'll get to that initial profit target and beyond on this one. Now, here's one we talked about a while back. One, two, three, four, and five. When was the high set for the week? The high was set on day one. So there you go. Bam, right there. Is that a trigger? No, no, because it did not close above that high. So it's not a trigger in the sense of you put in a stop order like we might do on a pullback or something. You would actually wait for a close above that high. So if it closes above this high, you're going to buy market on close. And let's see what happens. It just died out. And I could give you a hundred examples of these. So no capital was put in the harm's way. The secret to trading, if there is a secret, is avoiding as many bad trades as possible. When I first programmed my first successful mechanical system years ago, I said, well, let me just eliminate all the losers. And then I didn't realize it at the time, but that's pretty much a holy grail hunt. If you could do that, you'd own the world. Here's another one I'm long. I'm long quite a few IPOs right now. It's a little scary, I have to admit. One, two, three, four, five. You had okay range on this, about 40%, I think. High was set on what day? Day two. So we're not worried about it closing above the day one high. We're just looking for the highest close, which was set on day two for the week. And then let's see what happens. Meanders for a while, and then bam. Now, here's the thing. You have to do your homework with these things. You have to go, I almost thought about, my wife actually thought I had a service. I said, no, I don't have a service. One of my clients was like, I want to pay you to be on your IPO service. I was like, I don't have one. It was funny when I did the IPO course years ago, I said, you know, I'm going to do a service with this. And I was so worried that this IPO bull market would end that I decided not to. And what's kind of interesting is, yeah, there's been a few bear markets in between, but when a bear market comes around, or just poor conditions in general, nobody in their right mind is gonna bring a company public. So it's like, they sort of do the market timing for you, which is kind of cool because there's no IPOs to trade. And then when things heat up again, like right now, there's a plethora of IPOs coming out. And it, you know, it's, I was reading in one of these Darvis books, this, the old, there's an adage, I didn't know it until I read the book. It said, uh, don't go broke, go public. <laughs> it's these companies. So a lot of these companies are probably turds. Who cares if they go up? then we're going to buy them. If they don't, then we're not, right? Now, this one took a little bit of a leap of faith because it made that ex, ex, super wide range bar. And I wasn't sure whether to go with this one or not. I, it's a little bit of back and forth in this. I said, you know what? I'm going to go for it. And I just put on a smaller position size in this particular case, just because the wide range, this it's such a wide range bar on the entry. So I decided, let's just Let's just do it, you know, and, and and one thing I have to watch is, it's like if I go, like, I think I got creamed the day after I came back from San Francisco. My last speaking engagement before all this mess started was in San Francisco, and it went really well. And I came home, and I was all full of myself, and on Monday, I lost a lot of money in the markets because I was all full of myself. And I was a little nervous because it's like uh, I was all excited about this IPO stuff, and I'm getting ready to do a little webinar on it and it's like am i just trying to is it intuition or intuition with this particular pattern right before the webinar went public last uh, went live last thursday but anyway long story endless decided to go with it again took a smaller share size next day i was feeling like i may have done the wrong thing i was able to peel off a little bit of this stock in after hours yesterday i put in it wasn't that high, but it was much higher than where the stock closed. And somebody was taking the bait, so to speak. Greater fool theory. Whenever you buy a stock, what do you what do you what do you need? You need a greater fool. Somebody come along that's a greater fool than you to buy the stock from you. And guess what? He also thinks that somebody else is a greater fool. And I think that's probably a whole presentation in and of itself. So APG, we talked about this one last week, but I did want to bring it up again. The question was, Dave, that looks like a really deep pullback. It looks like too many days. I thought you didn't like pullbacks after that many days and that deep. 
Well, with IPOs in these these secondary setups in a fairly new issue, the first deep retracement, which could actually happen within the, like the first two weeks. So I guess it's still a pioneer setup. But with these patterns, I'm okay with a with a really deep pullback, which I call a first deep retracement, and quite a few bars in the in the pullback. Now I know when I did the IPO course, I was a little less lenient than I am now. I said that the first deep retracement, even with a lot of bars, shows promise. But now I I've gone ahead and I actually trade these, as you can see here. And this was recommended in a trading service. And that was a trade right there on a thousand, on a hundred thousand dollar account hypothetical, of course, everything we're doing here is for educational purposes, right? But I do actually take these trades and I try to simulate the service as much as possible. So I know if it's working, good, bad, or indifferent. <laughs> Have a little skin in the game, right? Anyway, you could see that based on the stop, in this particular case, this was a less volatile issue. It was kind of a more of a core type of setup. So getting back to Harry's question on the stop placement, in this particular case, two points was enough, okay? Lower price stock, somewhat lower price stock, two points is like 15, 20% in this particular case. And that's what it called for. And it's also, it trades fairly cleanly. So I figured two points would be about the right size. Now, this is not a buy on close pattern. This you trade just like a regular pullback. So you can put in a stop entry order, which I think I did. And the buy would be there, the stop would be down there and the IPT would be up there. Once you figure out where you're gonna place your stop, in this case, two points below the entry, then you automatically know where your initial profit target is, two points above the entry, okay? The only thing that you need a little bit of discretion with is how close to the market or are you gonna put your buy order? In this particular case, it was set up for several days coming in. So normally the buy order won't be that close to the market. Normally you wanna give it a little bit more wiggle room, but I was just following up on the setup and that would have been the actual setup from days past. And you could see that so far so good. It's hit the initial profit target. Came in a little bit today. Everything came in, momentum came in today, but the market makes new highs. You know, it's, it can be frustrating. And that's one thing I was talking about earlier in the trading service. Now, one thing I did want to show you here, I'm a big fan of showing you the money management. And so, we have this stop up a little bit above break even in this particular case. So if we get stopped out now, if where the stop is, at least we'll make a little bit on the second loaf and we'll also overall, we'll do okay on the trade annualize. I know you, I hate to play the annualize game because I guess you got to play it on downside too, but annualize, it's a pretty good little run even if we get stopped out. But hopefully, and there's that word, hopefully we're able to ride out a trend for a long, long time. So here's another one I took recently, and I know some of you guys in the Facebook group took it too, so congratulations. One, two, three, four, five, when is the high set for the week? Day one, okay. Extend that out, that's what happened last Friday, I believe. This is the one that we got in over the weekend, I think, or was that Monday? My days are all screwed up. So you could see in this particular case, I went in at a thousand shares. That might've been a little bit aggressive in hindsight, maybe. And then what was really cool on this one, I get asked this all the time. Hey Dave, you trading after hours? I try to avoid it and it can really suck you in. I got a client that gets all excited when somebody comes out with earnings or whatever, and he's trading in after hours, he calls me up. And before you know it, I'm getting in a lot of trouble. You know, one thing is you you can't use the the orders that make life easy, such as stops and automated trailing stops and all these other things. You're you're stuck to just limit orders, okay? So in this particular case, this thing was rallying after hours, like right after I bought it. So within two hours, I'd already hit the IPT. So this is one case where the buy market on close really worked out well. And by the way, these big known stocks like this with a lot of volume such as rack space i mean it's, it's a household name to me because 
daylearner.com has been hosted on Rackspace for the last five or six years at least, maybe longer. But anyway, it's in that area cloud. <laughs> and you can see this is what it's done so far. Now, I haven't stopped out. I probably should have stopped out today. I was busy looking at other things and I was able to survive that little dip below. But overall, you don't want, especially once you capture that initial profit target, you don't want to capture, I'm sorry, you don't want to give up too much of your gains. You want to make sure that you net out at a positive, at a profit, okay? You want to make sure you net out a profit when you let these things retrace back. So I'm at a slight loss in this one now, but I still think it's worth hanging on to. Were you able to get filled in after hours? Yeah, um, on that other one, one of the ones, I forget the name of it, but I was only able to get like uh, odd lots filled on one of them that I put in like a crazy order, a couple of points above the mar market. And then all of a sudden I, I, I'm doing my nightly analysis and I hear zing, zing, zing. And it's like, oh, what the hell is that? It's like I was getting filled, you know, 10 shares, 15 shares at a time, just little nibbles. Somebody really wanted it. And they, they, I guess they had a small account. Am I great a fool? But that was in uh, an issue. I forget what issue that was. N I R X maybe, but I didn't get a whole lot off in after hours. And you know, sometimes, you know, let's say I get an IPO at, at 20. Sometimes I'm in a goofy mood right before I go home, especially like on a Friday when I know I'll get to drink a beer when I go home. <laughs> I'll put in an order uh, 10 points above the market, you know, just something crazy like that. Okay. Now, before we go to live charts, look for some IPOs, a couple things. Volume, tricky, tricky, as I said earlier. Money management is, is key. Some of my recent winners, ORIC, FVAC, and others, eventually failed. They ended up with, in some cases, the fly and die pattern. And as I said earlier, this is another tricky part that takes a little bit of experience. And, you know, jury's still out whether or not the, the NRIX is going to pay off or not. But what happens when it makes that range on the buy day and, and my right now i'm going with them okay because ipos are hot but that's something to think about pioneer setups tend to work better usually your best opportunities first 30 days or so but sometimes they come public and they die out for a little while and then they really 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 take off so i wouldn't say just trade the first 30 days but that's probably where your opportunities are going to be i always at least look at the last every single IPO for the last 90 days. Again, buy a fly and avoid the die if you can. Okay, so let's find the next one. Before we do that, speaking of the next big thing, cryptos have heated up again. Now this is, they've heated up a few times in the past and then they come tumbling down, which is fine. You know, I'll just trade them, right? I don't want them to go up forever. I'd like them to go up and down. I mean, I want to go up now because I'm long, but. <laughs> so let's also take a look at crypto as we take a look at the IPOs. As I say each week, trading can be a really lonely sport. The best thing I've ever done, according to me and my wife, she thought that it was a great thing for me. She noticed a big change in me was the Facebook group. And. You have to be a gold member of daylearner.com, which is very reasonable, I think, for what you get. And I think everybody here, most everybody here is a gold member and they would agree with me, I hope, and I think. But the way I look at it, if you just get one good trade at the Facebook group or one learn one little thing about trading, you've already paid for it. And you know, trading can be a really lonely sport and I'm, I'm here by myself 99% of the time and it, it can get a little lonely. You're wondering, hey, am I the only one that's getting their buttocks handed to them today and things like that. So it, it does help to interact with other traders. You can ask for help. What's interesting is, is to, today I was trying to catch up on some of the posts and I'm answering posts and then I scroll back two posts and somebody already answered in a much better way than I would have answered it. So that's kind of cool. So a lot of these IPOs I will actually put out in the Facebook group because I don't have an official trading service just yet. So I think every one that I mentioned tonight, we had already talked about in the Facebook group. And then occasionally I'll throw out an opening gap reversal. I haven't had a tremendous amount of success with opening gap reversals 
lately, although I played a couple in the markets and did okay, but it seems like in individual issues, I haven't seen a lot of great setups in, in ogres. And y'all let me know if y'all traded ogres and, and have done okay lately, but I, they haven't really worked out for some reason. But I still scan for them. And I think if the right one, especially like a, a nice high volume issue, what happens in those cases, without going into a lot of details or too much off on a tangent, imagine that. But you might have some institutions that can't just pile into the stock. And sometimes you get these opening gap reversal situations and they'll go in and they'll start accumulating shares at a lower price. And that could help to push your stock higher. The shorts get squeezed out. There's a lot of things that happen. And I don't wanna go into a lot of details on that. If you do wanna know more about opening gap reversals, it's one of the more popular topics for the Q&A that we, we do. We haven't done one in a while. We'll do, we'll do one soon, I promise. I'm just, so much is going on lately. That's why we moved the week of charts tonight. But I do talk a lot about opening gap reversals, so go in and watch those Q&As. All right, let me shift gears here, and then we'll talk. We'll take a look at the overall market. We'll, take a, we'll look for some IPOs, and then I wanna show you some crypto. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is, I'm gonna go to my IPO list. And the way you create the list is, is pretty simple. You just go in and sort all the stocks, at least in Telechart, this is how you do it. And, and you know, last week I asked for the link and, and um, I got it from, from uh, Stock Charts and I forgot to publish it. But I haven't even answered the email within it. That's how far back, backed up I am. So let me switch over to, and it probably needs a little bit more cleaning, but I cleaned it up a little bit so we wouldn't have to go through too much garbage. Okay, so let's take a look at the recent IPOs and let's see what we could find. So I whittled it down to 144 and I probably could clean it up a little bit more. I did want to leave some of the stuff in here so you'd see it all. And so we'll just go through these real quick. This was kind of a breakout pullback. Volume's kind of thin, but it is kind of interesting. So that would be worth putting on your watch list, ACCD. Now, what do we have here? Well, it's an acquisition company, so who knows, but it's a die and die. It died out on its first day of trading. This stock hasn't done anything since day one. Now, I don't know for a fact, when I saw Albertsons, I assume that's Albertsons Grocery. It's only had about a two point range. What do we say about range? You want good range? You want some kind of excitement, okay? Here's one that rallied nicely out of a pullback and then came back in, a little money management, probably would have done okay. It was a little thin though. This one's kind of crazy. It's no longer set up. What is that? A die and a die so far. This one's kind of a narrow range. So let's just start going through these. Now this looks interesting. In fact, I put this as an honorable mention in tonight's service. The volume is a little bit thin. So this is your first deep retracement or first pullback. Two different patterns, okay? But basically the same. Sometimes a setup could be several patterns, okay? So it's also kind of TKO-ish. So that looks really good as a possible pullback. Again, it's a little thin and I wasn't able to check the spread on this earlier today. So it might have a bad spread. Now keep in mind, that spread might wax and wane. If you see that spread close up 10, 20 cents or so, maybe a little bit more, then it might be worth a shot on a trigger, of course. So let's just go through a few of these. That's kind of thin, maybe when it pulls back a little bit. APG, we're already long. We just talked about that one. We're in longer term trend following mode. And the great thing about IPOs is when they start making new highs, everyone is happy. Now, here's one I did not take, and I'll tell you why. I think this is a marketing company, and I just couldn't get that excited about it. It's 60-something dollars a share, and I said, you know what? If this thing is the greatest setup in setup town, I'll play the first deep retracement, or I'll play a pullback down the road. They'll give you a second chance to get in, kind of like that Oric did that we talked about earlier. But one, two, three, four, five, and depending on where the moving average was, you probably would have gotten an entry on this day. In fact, I know you would have, okay? 
the only thing is you can see it's already kind of reversed and come back in plus 60 something dollars a share it would have been a hard trade to take and i avoided that one that was kind of thin a lot of thin ones in here what do we have here day two it died what do you do nothing die nothing there's nothing to do okay this one's kind of thin but yeah you could it would have triggered some things this one shot up and came right back in nothing to do there there's another one a little bit on the thin side of the volume so let's just go through there obviously there's not going to be enough time to comment on all of them but this is kind of interesting it sort of took off kind of making a retracement in here it's higher price so i'm a little more skeptical one of the things i said in the ipo course price too high they're gonna die so it would be worth putting on your watch list to see how it shakes out let's just go through these and see if i'll, I'll just talk about the ones that kind of jump out at me So the volume on this one is so, so high was set on day one. So where would the entry be? It would have to close above that high. That's FRLN. Looks like it's a little thin though. So that would have to be, you have to pay attention to that. Now this one, I'm long. This is the most beautiful setup and setup town. Again, I'm long. So, but what I would recommend you do is mortgage your house, steal your kid's allowance, just put everything you can afford. No, not everything you can afford, everything you can't afford into the stock. Obviously, I'm joking. Somebody to take that out of context and get me in a lot of trouble. So I have a stop in place just in case. And I don't know whether I've taken partial profits on this one. I don't think I have because it hasn't gone far enough. But it does still kind of look interesting. Looks like it's kind of just pulling back. Looks like it has potential to continue higher. And hopefully, I'm not just talking about position. This is what I really liked, but it was just too thin. And your buy at D would have been right here, right around 13 and change, as you can see, okay? Why? Well, day one made the high, right? So it's got to close above that day one high. I know some of you guys took it, but it was just a little bit on the thin side for me. I, I couldn't do it. And you know, I should have bought 200 shares just to have some fun with you guys. <laughs> but you can see a lot of dying dies shaping up. This one I actually played a while back and notice it's a fly and a die, okay? So ignore this trading right here. This this is just, I think this is garbage. This day it had 7 million shares. If you go back and watch two or three weeks ago in a week of charts, I'll walk you through this trade. I made a little money on it, it came back in. You know, I dropped an F-bomb over here and then I realized my account was bigger <laughs> for this stock, for having this stock in it. You know, better to love and loss and never love at all, right? So this one, a little bit on the thin side, but it could make new highs soon. Maybe you want to put that on your watch list, check the volume and everything. Range is pretty, uh, is, is decent. High was set on day one. We have to close above this high, GBIO. Put that on your list. Kind of thin though, guys, kind of thin. So a lot of dies and dies. It's, you're going to be amazed at how many dies and dies. You know, I, I'll tell people, don't buy stocks until they come public for at least five days, close of the fifth day comes public on Monday, can't buy it till at least the close of Friday. You'd be shocked at how many people, you know, will email me, hey Dave, I bought this IMTX. They're gonna drive electric cars and run over coronavirus or something. Okay, well, good luck with that. Now, this one's kind of in a bit of a trend, maybe a pullback, but it's really, really thin, too thin. What happened here? Okay, I could show you example after example after example. Day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. Okay, your buy would be right here. What happened? It died. No capital. Again, it's put into harm's way. This might be okay on a little bit of a pullback. ITOS, ITOS, but it's kind of thin. There were quite a few dies in there. So let's just see if we can find a couple of more setups real quick, or at least something worth, worth watching. Now here's this in our NRIX, and Zach was asking if I was able to peel some shares off. Yeah, yesterday after the close, I was able to peel a few shares off, but it wasn't much, it was kind of comical. So technically I haven't really hit the initial profit target on this one, and I did take, I did uh, go in a small position. Anybody here take this trade? Just curious. But there was your new closing high right there. And it looks like the volume started to dry up a little bit. It's becoming a little bit of Hotel California. 
So this one, the range is too small. So technically it, it could set, it could be a, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Technically it could be a buy at B, but the range is a little small and the volume might be a little thin. So we'll have to keep an eye on that one. Keep it on your list, but don't run out and buy it just yet, okay? So these again are the IPOs of the last 90 days. This one's kind of a first deep retracement. It's been catching my eye as of late. So keep an eye on that one. I'd actually like to see a little bit deeper retracement, but it looks okay. This one I missed, and the reason I missed it was it just was too darn thin. But look at this beautiful setup. One, two, three, four, five. Your buy would have been on that day. I know you'd have been a hurt and puff for about a week, but then it would have paid off nicely. So let's just get through. Just got a few more of these to go through. Look, a die and a die, okay? A die and a die, a die and a die, okay? Now, this one looks interesting. I like this one. In fact, I was watching this one to buy this one on the close. This is RKT. When was the high set for the opening week? Day two, so we don't have to worry about day one, okay? What's the highest close? 25. So any close above 25, give it some wiggle room, let's say 25 and a half. Not a trigger. If he hits 25 and a half tomorrow and comes back in, it's trading at $20, but at the end of the day, don't call me crying, all okay? right? But if it closes above 25 and a half, I will be buying this stock. Better make a note of that. You guys get it without me. I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> I've done that before. I've gotten thank yous. Thank you for this stock. I'm like, what stock? Oh, crap. I forgot to buy it. What is that? Die and die. Okay. This is just chopped around sideways. Nothing yet. So as you go through these, lots of dies and dies. There's the RXT. First deep retracement. I am long, still long this stock. This is the best looking stock ever. Mortgage your house, okay? Your kids don't need toys or food. <laughs> Put all the money in this. You're going to have so much money. Afterwards, you'll, you'll be able to feed them the rest of your life. Again, I'm joking. Just put half your money in. No, I'm still long, so. So let's just round out these real quick. We've got about 10 left. Okay. This one's all right. This one's okay. Um, it would still have to close above the day one high. I will be watching this one tomorrow. I haven't made my mind up on it just yet. The range is okay. It's kind of just chopping back and forth, but the range is okay. So I might, depending on the volume and the spread and all, I might be buying this one on the close tomorrow if we close above that day one high. Maybe. We'll have to see. This was another one that took off, but volume was kind of light. And those are kind of just some garbage. This was a secondary setup that failed miserably. This was a beautiful setup and we lost money on it. I mean, it just, it just was a bummer, you know? And it, it did okay for a little while, but we didn't get the initial profit target out. And this one just, I dropped about six F-bombs on that one. Okay, let's shift gears and talk about crypto. You think crypto's kind of like kind gold and silver with regards to people getting into because of fear and deficit and dollar keep its status, keep its status as a reserve currency. Yeah, Zach, you might be thinking too much, but that, that has crossed my, my mind. Okay. The, uh, it, the Darvis book, it was either Wall Street, the other Las Vegas, as I said recently, I'm working on a piece on Darvis and probably will be for a long time with everything that's going on right now. But he, in one of them, talked about the personality of different stocks and just substitute markets for stocks, same thing, because markets are markets, they're all trading emotions, right? And the crypto is, is, is sucking in a lot of people who tend to be a lot of uh, excited traders and all, and, and all the Europe, Robin Hood people or getting into crypto now. And I, I don't, I don't know if people are saying they're printing all this money and let's go into crypto. Now, a fiat currency is backed by nothing in most currencies in the world, if not nearly all of them, or fiat now. <laughs> Somebody came up with the idea. We don't have to back it with anything. Let's just print a bunch of money. I do have some $100 trillion notes here. I wonder if I have one within my reach. 
I bought a stack of those dudes, <laughs> things or whatever. I bought a stack of $100 trillion notes from Zimbabwe and they were a dollar each, uncirculated. I bought a big fat stack of them and I gave them out to everybody I knew, you know, and my father-in-law loved his and, and my brother-in-law, he loved his, my brother-in-law's father-in-law loved his. And, you know, a lot of these guys would, uh, and, I, and I was too, I used to carry one in my wallet. <laughs> Comes time to pay, you throw one out on the, uh, hey, I got, I got this, you know, you throw a $100 trillion note out. Well, last time I checked, which is like five years ago, those things are like $60 each. So it's like, I really wish I wouldn't have given away all my $100 trillion notes. But believe it or not, I do have a point there. If you go in and read the article I did on Bitcoin, a lot of people say Bitcoin is, is just made up, it's fake. And it might be, I don't know, okay? Because it's, it's really not backed by anything, although you could argue, and I don't know what the going rate is now, but a while back, based on the amount of electricity it took, it took about $4,000 worth of electricity to mine one Bitcoin. So you could argue that $4,000 in cash is worth nothing or has nothing to back it, but 4,000, but a Bitcoin has $4,000 of work that's been put into it, money that's been put into it, however you want to look at it. So I don't know, but go in and read the article. I do talk a little bit about fiat currencies in that article. And that was one way for me to wrap my head around Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. And, you know, these exchanges, by the way, I trust them about as far as I could throw them. <laughs> you know, seems like a lot of shady things have gone on. I think they've all had problems here and there. I have I'm, accounts with two and I'm actually looking for a third or a fourth just to, just to spread it out a little bit. And I, I don't have my life savings in crypto, but I did I sold the brewery a while back and in very small amount of money for that. And I put it in crypto and, and it's it's done exceptionally well. And I trade the crypto. So well, in fact, without talking about it much more, let's go ahead and do, let's go ahead and jump into why I like crypto now. So this is, in case you're wondering, this is stockcharts.com this is their acp platform which is free to everyone who has stockcharts.com and anyone who likes this video this likes is just like this youtube video once it's up will get my plugin for free and there's several indicators that i have with the plugin by the way i'm not a huge fan of indicators i like to see indicators as illustrate the illustrators because they illustrate what's in the chart but they can be useful. Some of these little things like I like to use, mostly moving average related type of stuff and a 10% byline for market timing. That's all in the plugin. So everybody who likes the video or leaves a positive comment <laughs> gets it for free. And to get it, you just go down here, click on this plugin down here and it'll be available to you. So I made a little watch list here on some cryptos. And let's take a look at, at some of these. Now, lately, and uh, I think it was Zach last week asked, or week before, said, hey, should we just be trading pullbacks to the 30-day EMA? Although it's worked really well lately, I would say, no, learn the other patterns, too, that I talk about. But lately, that pattern has worked well. And if you're newer to trading, then, yeah, by all means, use something like these Landry Light pullbacks, okay, in whatever market you're trading, stocks or whatever. But that would be a good place to start. Master one pattern. If you're not successful with one pattern, you're not going to be successful with 10. And like Linda Rasky said, all you need is one pattern to be successful. And sometimes I probably need to remind myself of that too. Especially when I go into a drawdown, probably the best thing for me to do would be go in and just trade one pattern again until I get back on my feet. And I would recommend you do the same thing and keep it simple. But one thing you could do here, and let me set the parameters on this to uh, 10. So this is set to 30 EMA, and then we're gonna do 10 for the reference level. So if we have 10 days of Landry light, meaning that it's green and above this bar of 10, this little horizontal line, then we're gonna look to buy on a pullback. And the cool thing about this, it's easy to recognize, and you could just go down here and say, okay, we're gonna buy when these little humps go down to zero. Provided, of course, it shows signs of 
resuming its uptrend, okay? So this is kind of cool. And I'm just seeing this for the first time in this particular currency, if you want to call it that. I've never heard of this until today. Anybody have ever heard of Cardano? <laughs> Whatever it is. I'm sure it doesn't sound as Cajun as that. But you can see it's had a few little pullbacks to the moving average along the way, and it's made a nice little trend higher. I don't, I've never traded Bitcoin Cash either. I just trade Bitcoin. But you can see it's pulled back to the 30-day EMA. Doesn't have quite the trend that Bitcoin has. So this Binance is kind of all over the place, although lately it's been trending. I don't know what the volume is on that. There's a couple that I am interested in here, though. This is Bitcoin SV. I just heard about this one today, too. Mostly I've been trading Litecoin, Bitcoin, I've done a little bit of Ripple. I did some Ripple recently, not the wine, the crypto, and uh, Ethereum. Ethereum has been one of my favorites on and off since I've been doing this. But I like to keep a little bit, so to speak, in the reserve currency, if you want to call it that, of Bitcoin, just because I like to have a little bit in case it goes crazy. There's some people make arguments for million dollar Bitcoin. It makes a lot of sense, but that may not happen at least not for a while. So here's Bitcoin. I am long Bitcoin. It's had some pretty nice pullbacks along the way. As you can see, the 30 EMA consolidated, really didn't do anything wrong. And then it's taken off again in here, kind of pulling back a little bit. So I would keep an eye on Bitcoin. Ideally, if you're going to initiate a new position, I'd like to see it accelerate higher and then possibly pull back to the moving average. Okay. Let's take a look at... EOS, which looks okay. It's kind of broken out and come back in, came back in. I haven't traded this one yet. I don't know if anybody, if anybody's traded any of these more obscure ones, let me know. But I do have an order in, and one of these more obscure ones, which I'll, obscure ones we'll show you in a minute. Now here's Ethereum, which tends to be one of my favorite cryptocurrencies. I am long Ethereum right now. So a little bit of a pullback here, maybe if it tags this 30-day EMA, I think it'd be worth a shot. And keep in mind, by the way, that as I preach, everything works better with trend. You're gonna play with this little plugin and go, man, this guy's a genius. It's like, no, market's trending right now. Okay, I can't take, I can't take all the credit for that. So here's the one that I have an order in. I prefer a little bit deeper pullback, but I have an order at 18, just FYI for what it's worth, okay? But you can see nice, nice, nice thrust higher, a little bit of a pullback to that EMA. Now, keep in mind when you're trading a currency, and I use that term loosely when it's cryptocurrencies. I'm still not convinced they're real, but I can trade them. <laughs> I've actually uh, converted some into like hard assets just to prove that it's real. You know, it's like, okay, so that's real money. But you can see it's pulled back to the moving average and took off from there. Pretty nice looking, looking chart there. I wish I'd have known about this one actually about a month or two ago. Just so busy with so many other things. And you know, here I am, what, 15 hours into my day. I haven't gone home yet, you know? But that one I like a lot. I think it's worth a shot. Litecoin's been doing really well too. I like Litecoin. Now I did get long Litecoin back here recently. And I don't know how much I have left over. Not a whole lot. I think I've flipped out into some other currencies, cryptos or whatever. But it did pull back to the 30-day EMA nicely. It's kind of pulling back again. So Litecoin looks pretty good. Again, Litecoin, Ethereum, and Bitcoin, those are the main ones I trade. But I am beginning to open it up a little bit to some of these other crazy pairs in here. Now, this one looks really, really good, but I can't find I, I don't know if you could trade this. Does anybody know IOTA? I haven't found a broker yet that will trade it, okay? Is the pullback too shallow and what? And this one? It could be a little bit deeper, but it's pretty good looking. It's a pretty good looking crypto. And again, you guys let me know. Uh, please leave a comment if you're watching this on YouTube, if you know that if you could actually trade this or not. I don't claim to be an expert in crypto. I just buy things that go up and I sell things that go down. And some people call me a trend following moron. But markets are markets. You don't have to be an expert in crypto as long as you know how much you're buying, what your risks are, where you're going to take profits, and how you're going to try your stops. If you know all that, you can trade any market in the world. 
XLM, this one's kind of a little choppy in here. This is Stella. Stella. <laughs> Not gonna do it. Monero. I think you can actually trade this one. I may have traded it before, but you can see it's breaking out the brand new high. So the next pullback here might be worthwhile. If you're familiar with my methodology, things like TKOs can be really nice in the crypto. First thrust, bow ties, okay? All the stuff works in all markets. Now, one thing about the crypto is if it becomes really, really, really popular, it's gonna become more and more efficient market. In fact, when I trade something like Forex and then now crypto, I'm a little bit more lenient in the patterns because you don't always get a perfect setup like you might get in some thinner IPO type of setup or just a setup in general. And let's just take a look at Ripple and close a loop on here. Ripple looks okay. It has a bit of a double top knockout look to it. Maybe if it tags this 30 day EMA, it might be worth a shot again. So I would write that one down. It's 29 cents, you know, buy a thousand, you know, whatever, thousand dollars worth. <laughs> Yeah, you know, if it tags a moving average just for S and G's. But as a general statement, again, I like to, to trade mostly in the bigger ones, but I do dabble in this. And I was able to flip out this little pullback here recently. I did play this and then I flipped out some up here. I don't know if I have any left or not in this particular case. Again, I focus on the bigger ones, but this one sometimes can trend nicely. And then obviously you want to avoid them when they're just chopping around. Look down here, you got green and red and nothing and green and red and nothing and red, 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 and then green. Wait for them to get gone and then look to trade some pullbacks along the way. So that's crypto. Okay, any questions on crypto? I'm not a crypto expert. I just know that markets trade on emotions and I like trading any market that's moving. So let's take a look if you wanna talk about individual stocks, start asking about your individual stock questions. Now let's go and take a look at, I'm just gonna give you a little thumbnail of what's happening in the overall market while you guys are putting in your stock picks. S&P 500, nice little opening gap reversal today. I did play that move higher. In fact, uh, I can't see it, I got a light in my face. I didn't hear a, a ding, so I am still long some S&P futures overnight. We'll see what happens. I stayed short all last night, and then hopefully I'm long all night tonight, and it goes up all night tonight. Obviously, a tough market to trade, though. <laughs> I, you know, I tell you, I get chewed up. You know, you 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 hit it just right, like last couple of days, and it feels so good. But then you get chewed up, chewed up, chewed up. So I would caution you if you're going to trade these efficient markets to be super duper duper careful. But nice little hookup in the S&P 500. Just um nat's eyelash off of all time highs i almost said something dirty <laughs> hey take a look at nasdaq i feel like oh i feel like tiny elvis is coming out look look at that nasdaq is the trend is huge uh nice little opening gap reversal nice little outside day i probably should have been playing the cues or something as opposed to s p futures because this is a, a beautiful setup there as far as the opening gap reversal is concerned Rusty did not get the memo. You can see a little bit of an opening gap reversal there, but it didn't get back in black, unfortunately, but it looks okay. Nice little breakout out of this range, a little bit of a pullback. I got crushed today, by the way. I don't know if anybody else got crushed. I guess anybody following the service got crushed, but I got hit hard and it was kind of hard to put on a happy face and come give this presentation. I'm still human, you know? And it's frustrating when the market's making new highs and you're getting crushed. The only thing that helped me a little bit was the S&P trades. But other than that, it was it was a tough day for a momentum guy. High momentum, high beta, I should say. Gold, the commodity, did a little bit of a hookup today. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> My daughter's like, so did you, did you meet the guy? Did you hook up? You know, I was like, dad. It's like, what, you know, did, I mean, did y'all see each other? Did you go out, whatever? Dad, like, well, evidently hooking up means something different nowadays. I guess I'm old, I'm getting old. <laughs> anyway, it hooked up. <laughs> uh, I'd like to see this pivot point get taken out in gold before getting too excited, but it does look pretty good. I like the way it was able to close that gap and consolidate. It may have gotten a little ahead of itself and had a little shaking of the trees, okay? 
but I like it. I like gold and I like silver. Silver's a little bit stronger than gold. I like to see it take out this pivot point. So far, so good. Last week, I was in a show called The Pitch where we talked about different stocks. I think Rackspace was one I mentioned. And not a huge fan of ETS, but I mentioned silver, SLV, as a possible trade. This is a little trend knockout here. So that would have triggered and you would still be long, maybe a stop down here, okay? Measure that distance and that'll be your your uh, initial profit target. Gold and still, silver uh, stocks, sort of following suit. They still look okay in here. I'm still bullish on these guys. Ideally though, you wanna see this pivot high get taken out if you take any trades there. So let's just go through a couple more sectors and lots of questions just coming in. So I wanna get to those, make sure we have enough time. Hardware, if you have hardware, what do you need? You need software for your hardware. Look at that, brand new highs there. Semiconductors pull back a little bit today, but look at that trend they've been in. They've been in a huge trend. Tiny Elvis is coming out again. Biotech, bit of a disappointment. Let's take a look at the bow tie moving averages. And you can see they've crossed over to the downside. Now, on an individual issue basis, I'm still seeing some excitement there. I'm still excited about biotech, but I might have to pull my horns in it, admittedly. It, you know, believe in what you see, not in what you believe or want to believe, right? But the pockets of strength in biotech are still pretty amazing. But biotech overall, beginning to like wane a little bit in here, as you can see, bow tie to the downside. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that. Health services has lost a little bit of momentum, but it's just consolidating. It looks poised to continue higher. As you can see, bow tie is doing pretty good there. Let's take a look at the major drugs. And you can see they've lost some steam too. They haven't bow tied down, but overall in longer term, still looking pretty darn good. Let's take a look at retail. Not too bad. Nice little uptrend there. And by the way, take a look at the 30 day moving average. It's pretty amazing how the 30 day moving average the exponential moving average. That's something I've really enjoyed a lot lately. Look at a little pullback here and just beautiful trends. It's just been a, a, a wonderful thing lately. Transport's kind of consolidating in here, kind of a flag. They look poised to make a new leg higher. So overall, I think things still look pretty darn good, but you know the routine one day at a time. Zach was asking about the dollar. Well, that's what the dollar is doing, okay? So that's probably helping crypto along. It's probably helping silver along. It's probably helping gold along. It's probably gonna help commodities go higher because commodities are dollar denominated, okay? Let's take a look at what oil is doing. Oh, oil's not doing a whole lot, but it looks like it's kind of drifting a little bit higher in here and the dollar is helping that out a little bit. BTBT, I like that stock, BTBT. For Donald, I do like this one. It's a little bit thin. I think this was in the Landry list last night. I took it out tonight because it's a little thin. So be super careful there, but let me see if I wrote it down in my own notes. Nope. Sometimes I'll write down some of these thinner stocks for me to look at, but yeah, it looks pretty good. In fact, I'll give you a high five on that one. HV 181, it's crazy. HV right now is just crazy in some of these stocks. You just have to kind of go with it. I was probably a little slow to adjust to the volatility. The dollar's not helping me. Yeah, I, I hear you, Barry. Barry is down under. Brisbane, Brisbane, I hope I said that right. Melbourne, how do you say Mel Melbourne? Melbourne? <laughs> oh, what do I think about this portfolio? All right, well, KC, FUV, KC, I got you. KC looks okay. I mean, have a stop in place. I wouldn't rush out and buy it, but longer term, it's just kind of consolidating from a longer term uptrend. FUV, I am long this stock. This is the most beautiful stock in the world. After you make your money on all those other stocks I talked about, pile everything you own into this, take your kids allowance. And no, no, it's not set up, but it did. Uh, we got in right here on this big wide range bar day. It looked like it was off to the races, unfortunately. Had a bit of uh, a perceived bad news, not bad news. There's no such thing as good news or bad news. It's how the market perceives it. So perceived bad news. But look at that little reversal it made. So I'd say that your portfolio so far is looking pretty good. DCLI, I'm in that one too, which this is the mo this is incredible. You should just mortgage your house and, and, and buy this stock too. Obviously, I'm joking. Yeah, I don't like the action today. It pisses me off a little bit. This is what I was talking about earlier. It's like, was it just me? Did everybody get whacked today? Or, you know, this crazy market 
but I do think this one still has potential. This was a beautiful setup. I just loved it. The persistency, the nice little pullback, very clean setup. But so far it hasn't worked. So get stopped out, stop. So what? Well, so what, my ass. I'm gonna drop an F bomb, but you get the idea. SLV I like. So yeah, I like that portfolio. I really do. Uh SLV, as I just said, I recommended that in the pitch last week. FUV I'm long, DCLI I'm long, so I can't argue with that. Bought all of the SUV a while ago, two weeks ago. Yeah, those looks like a good looking portfolio. YCBD I like. I think I took that one off the watch list for tonight for some reason. I don't remember why. Yeah, because I, I gave it another look. I don't like all this overhead fluff back here, but this was on the watch list, the Landry list, I think coming into today or yesterday. I like the TKO. I like the little pullback. It does look pretty good. It looks like it has at least the potential to go back to four. So if it wasn't for the overhead supply, I would say, I'll give you a high five on that one. I suppose not because the term ogre means opening gap. You lost me. Oh, can ogres be in a daily chart? For example, GLD. Absolutely. Well, that's where ogre is. Okay. It's on a daily chart. Take a look at the NASDAQ. Okay. That was on a daily chart. See, gaps down. Not a huge gap, but a gap nonetheless. And so when you see that happen, you see the market reversing. And now if it's a big gap, then you can, you can kind of go for it. But when you see it gap down and start making a reversal, then you can start thinking about getting in to the market. So we talk about GLD. Let's see. GLD. Yeah, uh, GLD made a little bit of an ogre today. Now, keep in mind with the commodities that the commodity markets are open at different hours, too, and they trade a lot overnight. So you will get gaps in, in um, commodity ETFs. And that's why you got to be careful trading them. A multiple day ogre? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, an ideal world, you want an opening gap reversal, it'll take out a few days. You know, everything we do is based on emotion. So you want to have as many people trapped on the wrong side of the market as possible. You know, that's. Yeah, that looks good. Decent volume. It's sporting goods, but you know, I'm having a hard time getting excited about sporting goods. I think I rejected this one just because it's got a lot of overhead supply. I know it's a long time ago, but markets do tend to have long memories. But it looks okay. I mean, I think it has a potential to pop up to its old highs, but I wouldn't take it based on a longer term trend. Uh, overhead supply. Remember, I'm trying to get into a stock that doesn't have any trouble longer term. No, I'm not saying like, for example, GLD gap down and then your trade for it two or three days filled the gap. No, no, no. Okay. Um, gaps aren't always filled. So what he's saying is, and now, now I have seen this pattern work. I will tell you that. I have seen the second day of work. And it's something I don't actually trade directly, but I think you're onto something there, Zach, possibly. I've seen like a gap, and then the next day you have a big thrust higher. Like I'll try to play an open a gap like this, fail miserably, and then the next day I watch the damn stock go up 10 points without me. So you may have backed into something there. That's something that that day, the day after, Ogre plus one might be something that's worth researching, okay? So why don't you why don't you do that since you're uh, on my research staff? So why don't you do that unofficially? <laughs> but yeah, take a look at uh, day one, day plus one, day plus two, open a gap reversals, and see what see what happens. Uh, gold wouldn't probably be the best market to look at for that. But yeah, there's probably something there. Now keep in mind that all gaps don't get closed. But it is possible. Let's see. So like S&P 500, maybe on that day there. I don't know if you would have gotten much out of it. But yeah, Ogre plus one, Ogre plus two, possibly. I know Larry Connors and I don't know if it's some of Linda's patterns too, but they did a book together years ago, Street Smarts. And um, 
Yeah, GBTC, I can't bring up on this. Oh, you know what? I can bring it up over here. GBTC is Bitcoin. And on some of the patterns, they just they ended up with what they call plus one and plus two. So let me just, uh, can I do that on the fly? Yeah, this is probably won't be efficient. If you don't have a Bitcoin account, then yeah, by all means, if you want to go after GBTC, that's fine. It trades at a big premium. As long as that premium premium stays the same or keeps expanding or expands, I should say, then you're probably okay. But I would prefer to trade the underlying crypto. But yeah, I've traded it before. I've fired off some day trades in here just to for S and G's, you know, to get a little more exposure to Bitcoin. So that's fine. I think if you were to hold longer term, I would actually hold the commodity itself, the uh, Bitcoin itself. T C N N F long. I don't know if I'll have that in my other charts. Let's try here. T C N N F. Okay. Yeah, this is a, a cannabis stock. It could use a little bit more pullback. I don't know what the volume is. Let's see. T C N N F. Yeah, I can't pull that in my other uh in telechart. So I don't know if the volume is there, but if it pulls back a little bit, it might be worth a shot. Again, provided there's plenty of volume, it's considered a pink sheet stock. So that was Mike, Mike. Yeah, silver trigger, they did. Pull back too shallow. Uh, that was in a crypto. Yeah, we talked about that. Okay. Any more questions? We have a few more minutes. While we're in impasse, I wanna thank everybody for coming tonight. I appreciate you taking time, again, out of your busy schedule to be here, anything unanswered, David, Dave Leonard .com. Give me, <laughs> give me three weeks. <laughs> or, you know, I'll tell you what, if you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment below and I'll get to it. If you're in the Facebook group, just ask there and I'll be happy to. Zach says, great show, big Dave. Thank you, Zach, I appreciate that. The camera adds to like 50, 60 pounds. So it's probably that, you're welcome, Barry. You have a good breakfast over there and I'll see you when you wake up, I guess, tomorrow in the Facebook group. All right, everybody have a great night. If we don't talk to you now and then, everybody have a fantastic weekend. Thank you so much.